All right, I got one more Julian Assange clip that I want to show you guys. So just to set this up, at the press conference, uh, the control of the microphone was on a little button in front of each person. They had a microphone and then they had a little button you could push if you wanted to turn it on or off. And so here is Julian Assange explaining readjusting to family life. Uh, it actually starts out pretty somber and then there's a, uh, a nice, cute moment of levity here as well. Uh, my readaptation to the big wide world outside of house arrest, an embassy siege, and maximum security prison, it sure takes some adjustment. Um, it's not simply the spooky sound of electric cars. They are very spooky. Um, but it's the, it is also the change in the society the where we once produced a important uh, where we once released the important war crimes videos um, that stirred public debate now every day there are live stream horrors from the wars in Ukraine and the war in Gaza Hundreds of journalists have been killed in Gaza and Ukraine combined. The impunity seems to mount and it is still uncertain what we can do about it. My readaptation to the world, of course, includes some positive, but still tricky things. Becoming a father again to children who have grown up without me. Becoming a husband again. Even dealing with a mother-in-law. <laughs> These are trying <laughs> family issues. No, she's, she's a very lovely woman. I like her, I like her very much. <laughs> Stella with the comic timing there to uh, mute his mic when he starts uh, talking shit about, about the mother-in-law. That was well-timed there. Nice moment of levity after, uh, like I said, just a, a very somber moment about readjusting to life. Uh, his family was denied a husband and a father for these five years. Uh, just the societal changes that he has to observe. And to make that point about journalists in these war zones being killed. That is just incredible what he went through, that he has that kind of dignity, poise. And it is very interesting what he's saying, because sure, when he released that footage from Iraq of civilians getting killed, it was a big deal. And uh, yes, that's got to be really strange for him that you're seeing footage like yeah. that on TikTok. Exactly. And and X every day. All day, every day. All day, every day. It's not a big, and it's not a big deal. Right. People right. just inert to it. Right. Like, yeah, more of it. Yeah. More of it. And, yeah. and there's, and, and, and it's not doing anything to stop it. These governments are just going on with impunity and he... He calls it straight out. I'm not sure what we can do about it. Yeah, the impunity seems to mount, and it's unclear what we could do about it. Right. You know, he always had about him a real calm. He always had a real zen. Because, look, even when we when we all got to know Julian Assange, he was available to us in terms of, like, he could communicate with the outside world. But he was shacked up in the embassy, and he couldn't leave. So he's been a prisoner of sorts for as long as most of us have really known who he is. Uh, and now to see him move about the world as a free man and and comment on these observations, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. That collateral murder video was shocking for the time. And now, 
we scroll past shit that's that's even more graphic than that way more you know we, we just we, you know we see it all day every day um and so yeah i mean just uh just in- incredibly brave to be to be speaking out like this this soon after i mean yeah. this guy was just tortured for five years well well i think that's what everyone was wondering everyone was wondering if they broke him yeah right yeah if, if you're just not really going to hear from him anymore what was he going to do but he's right back out there and he is going to have if he continues to be out there speaking on these things he's going to have incredible moral authority right like he has the potential to be a real he already is an iconic figure but even more so please clap 